Hey everybody, it's Thursday afternoon. I normally come to you on Friday, but today I'm gonna come live to you because I am leaving town early tomorrow morning, headed to Las Vegas for Stampin' Up's on stage. I'm very excited um, and I didn't wanna completely cancel our Facebook Friday, so we are going to uh, do it today, a day early. Hopefully you guys will be able to find me. Hi Michelle, how are you? Hi, okay, good, I see you guys jumping on. I always am a little bit paranoid that I'm in the wrong group. All right, let me pull you up here on my iPad. We're gonna get started pretty quickly today because today's projects are a little bit long. Um, they take quite a bit of um, work, so why can't I figure out how to share this video? Let's do that real quick. Over to my page blah 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 post and we're good now i want to be able to see your comments okay there we are cynthia gina hi good i'm glad you guys are here all right so today we're going to do three projects with the yummy christmas um before we get started on that i just want to remind you i'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it um but both of my classes to go the cup of christmas and where is it the snow front stamp stack both the deadlines are I have two different deadlines so Monday at the latest okay you guys Monday at the latest um, I've already cut um, 80 class kits and I we've already registered more than that so I will be cutting furiously when I get back from on stage so if you want one please 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 um, register ASAP okay the links are at the bottom of today's post and they will be on the PDF today hi everybody um, if you've never joined me for Facebook Friday before or Facebook Thursday um, you can go over to my blog pinkbuckery.com and you'll find a PDF under the last photo it has all the measurements there's a lot of measurements today all the measurements and products listed um, that you'll need for the product projects and if you put in an order an online Stampin' Up order by Monday at midnight and use today's host code I will send you these three make and takes for free next week okay you guys can actually probably see my mail right there that's last week's Facebook Friday projects and they're late I'm so sorry the weather has been terrible usually I can set them out but today I wasn't able to and then I missed the mail lady so I'm gonna go to the post office this afternoon okay all right uh michelle you you like my stamp and space it is great it, although i feel like it's too small don't we always feel like that no matter what we have it's not quite as much as we need all right i'm going to flip you guys around i'm going to tell you about prizes and then we're going to get started hello everybody i bet lots of you on here are going to stampin ups on stage this weekend it's our annual or biannual really um, convention uh, we have it in different locations all over the world five different in the United States whoops hold tight guys sorry um, and the one that I'm going to is in Las Vegas and if you're gonna be there you'll see me I'm gonna be presenting on stage yay I have new product I'm so excited about okay now how about we do prizes since it's right here. Prizes from last week. I have a paper share and a ribbon share. Linda, let's see, Linda Smith and Diane Heath. You are our random winners. Thank you for sharing the video. That's all you have to do to be entered to win. If you uh, would please so kindly send me your mailing addresses. Um, I will get these in the mail to you on Monday, okay? So congratulations, ladies. This week's prizes are from the annual catalog, but they're Christmas stamp sets. Don't forget, we have Christmas stuff in the annual catalog as well. Lots of cheer, very, very cute. I have this, but I haven't even opened it. I need to open it up because it's very cute. So if you would like to win a lots of cheer stamp set, all you have to do is share on Facebook. Um, let's see, I need to also remind you of the All-Star Tutorial Bundle. If you spend $50 with me online, you will get this for free in your email. I just sent them out this morning. Um, I was a little bit late, I apologize. Um, it's 50 tutorials by 50 tutorials. How about 12 tutorials by 12 amazing Stampin' Up! demonstrators? And we um, have new ones every month. So every time you order with me uh, each month, you'll get that for free. Um, I had a thought, oh, keep in mind, 
Next week is our holiday extravaganza sale from the 20th through the 22nd. I plan on having some big fun things offering for you next week. So be keep your eye um, on the lookout for that next week. It's kind of our Black Friday special. It's the week before Thanksgiving this year instead of the week of Thanksgiving. Okay, we're going to get started. So here are the three projects that we're making today. And they all feature the Yummy Christmas stamp set. If you would like for me to send you these three make and takes for free, remember you can put in your order by Monday at midnight using this host code right here. It's also on my blog and on today's PDF. And this is just kind of what they look like when they come. All right, here's the one for seasonal wreaths. Christmas time is here. I always put a little tag in there. Here's last week's with our tags, tags, tags. They come just like this um, with the link to the video so you can watch and remember how to make them. They are fun and um, some of you order them every week basically by putting in an order every week. So I'm grateful for you. I hope that you're enjoying those projects. Okay, so Yummy Little, no, Yummy Christmas, not Little, Yummy Christmas is a fun set and it's low, uh, reasonably priced too. Um, it's right here on page 23 of the holiday catalog and it is only $16. That's a pretty cheap set when it comes to stamping up prices. Um, now it has dies that coordinate with it. These are them. You will find these though over in the annual catalog. See them right here? This is page 192. They're the Cuckoo Clock Dies and they are in a bundle. You can get them by themselves or you can buy them in a bundle. Let me flip back over to that page, page 29, with this cute little stamp set called Cuckoo For You. And what's really fun is that these dies, they coordinate with both. So the reindeer, for instance. Okay, new nails, guys. I'm gonna have a hard time doing anything today. New nails. Okay, so here, look, here's the reindeer die. So it would cut out the reindeer in that stamp set. And then over here, it flips around like this and it cuts out the, the little holly berries. So really, really cool. I love when Stampin' Up! does that because it kind of gives you twice as many things to cut out. It gives you twice as many images to use with your dies. Um, you can see this one's more of a cuckoo clock and whoops, where's my other one? And then this one is a gingerbread house. So if you buy the bundle, you save 10%. Here's the bundle right here. Make sure you use the bundle number if you get that bundle. And then you can add this one on for 16 more dollars and you have two stamp sets that coordinate with one die. I think that's pretty cool. I have um, used this one a couple of times in the summer, but I haven't used it since then, but it does have some holiday things too that um, I need to leave that out and use it. Okay, now here's the deal with Yummy Christmas and that one too. This is a coloring stamp set. As you can see, this involves a lot of coloring and we have a lot of coloring options and my favorite, of course, you guys know is are the Stampin' Blends. And let me give you just a little bit of a heads up that it takes about, I don't know, 10 minutes to color this guy. Um, if you really take your time and go slow. And, but if you like to color, I know there's lots of us that really like to color. Sit down, turn on a Christmas movie, stamp a few of these and just color away. And it's so much fun. They're just really, really cute. So we're gonna color it. I've actually done some ahead of time so that it won't take us too long because we're gonna actually do two different gingerbread houses. And then the third one, I'm going to show you how you can stamp it without coloring it if you're short on time. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move all of these guys over and I think I'm going to move these projects, put them on their trays. So this project is really fun. And <laughs> I have to say that I stole this peppermint mocha, um, from another project that you'll see later. Um, and it, these are Starbucks and I actually bought a box today and left it in the car uh, at Starbucks. Um, you can also get them on Amazon. I got them on Amazon. But what I have in here are our friend little Debbie, the Christmas gingerbread soft cookies. These are easy to find. They're in most of the little Debbie uh, displays um, on my blog. I should have listed a little Debbie link so you can go over there and enter your zip code and find these. Now I of course had to booze it up right <laughs> and make it a boozy gingerbread gift. This is some cheap liquor I found at the liquor store. 
last year I had bought several remember when we did that um boozy hot chocolate treat well this was one that I got so it's some generic knockoff brand um, but it's fun and it's cute and you guys always email me to ask me how much how many ounces these are I have no idea these are like the little airport bottles or the airplane you know the little travel well, I guess they're not called travel but you get them on the airplane you get them in your hotel room it's just a little tiny you know what do you call that? It's a one. It's a one -er. But anyway, I don't know how many ounces it is. What does it say? It doesn't even say how many ounces. It just says you how much alcohol. But anyway, a fun little peppermint something and uh, the, the little peppermint mocha and then the gingerbread man. And what I did, I had him, I put a little dimensional on him so he would stick up a little bit higher. Now, if you are not into boozy gifts, I totally understand. And we can totally make this non-boozy, right? So we could take this out and put marshmallows, a little bag of marshmallows, um, or we could just do hot chocolate, or you could even just do one of those, and then two of these guys will fit overlapping like that, okay? So just some fun options <laughs> to go with our little gingerbread house. It's just very, very cute. Okay, let's stamp and let's get started coloring. Um, I do recommend that you use your Stamparatus when you are stamping this. Let me get all my goodies out over here. I'm sorry, guys. Um, when you're stamping this gingerbread house, because it's large. Yeah, Carla, it's a shot, right? Oh, m hey, Mom. My mom says it's four ounces. Mom, how do you know that? <laughs> Whatever it is, it's just a... What do you call those? Air, um, airplane, bottle, little, tiny, I don't know, single serve, Nathan. Hey, Nathan, single serve. Yeah, you know, just the little ones. Um, and there's no particular like hole that it fits in. So, you know, if yours is a little bit bigger, whatever, it's still gonna fit in there. Okay, so we you wanna use your Stamparatus because this is a larger, um, uh, hello larger stamp and a lot of times when we stamp our larger stamps sometimes we don't stamp them very well and we lift it up and it's like you know it's um didn't stamp so well in a certain area but with your stamp apparatus you can just lay it back down if it doesn't stamp well you know like oh look see i didn't stamp it very good there so i'm going to set it back down and really push down and make sure i get all those spots okay so i did that in memento black because I'm going to use my stamp and blends and then the magic of television ta-da and hey you know what mom you're going to recognize this I thought today I want because we're doing a lot of really like detailed work I want to be able to get closer up to the camera so look I stole this from my mom it's this cute little lap tray and we're going to put it down right here if I can just make room on my table her. Oh, it's kind of angled. There, look, now you guys can see it close. And it's got glue and stuff on it, but who cares? Okay, so what I've done, I've done a lot of coloring so that you wouldn't have to sit over 10 minutes watching me color, right? So I use cherry cobbler for the peppermints and the bow and the candy cane. Then I used dark call me clover. Now this isn't the green that's in the designer series paper. I think that the green in the DSP is garden green, but it's fine it goes close enough now if you use one of the patterns that's a more green you might want to change out your green a little bit we don't have a garden green um maybe shaded spruce is there shaded spruce in that paper anyhow just know that i know that this color isn't in the dsp that's okay and um you told me i could have it mom <laughs> um okay cherry cobbler call me clover um, I did Davidil Delight for the windows and then Light Night of Navy there um, for the little gumdrops. Now, in my clean recording video, which will be on YouTube today, if you want to come back and watch this without all the chit chat, um, I have a clean recording. I used crumb cake to color the gingerbread house. Here it is. But then I realized that I think I must have used soft suede. See how it's darker? So that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use soft suede, okay? So I recommend that you color all the little things first. Then take your lighter color 
and you're gonna want to work in small sections because if you do this, the whole thing, and then try to go back and add your shading, a lot of your ink will have already dried. Wow, this is really easy, a lot easier for me to color when it's up high like this. All right, so I'm gonna go in with my light, soft suede, and do, you know, kind of a, just a coating of it. Um, I will say our next project, we're gonna color less, and then the next project after that, we're gonna color zero. I'm gonna show you different ways where you can use this without spending, you know, if you had to make 10 of these, you probably have to sit through a few Christmas movies to get it all done. And if you like doing that, then go for it. But for me, I, I like to get things done fast. All right, so now I'm going with my dark soft suede and I'm making a shadow behind and under all of these little things that are here. Probably adding too much, but it's okay. And you probably, if you're like me, you'll want to use the bullet tip because you have better control in smaller spaces. At least that's how I feel. I don't know, do you guys feel differently? Those of you that use your blends a lot, I just feel I have much better control. That brush tip is great for big spaces, but I kind of, I get out of control with it and I get out of the lines. Hey guys, nice to see you, Angelica. Where have you been? It's been a while, my friend. All right, so the white part is icing or snow, I don't know. And we're just gonna leave it white. And the next project, we're gonna make it 3D. We're gonna puff it up. All right, now up here on the roof, I'm just gonna leave it light. Lights, lights off suede, that's what I'm trying to say. There we go. All right, did I miss anything? Yes, the gingerbread guy. So here, we, won't, we don't want him to blend into the, the house, so you can do him light, um, soft suede, or you can do him, you could pull out your crumb cake uh, markers and do him in crumb cake. He's really cute, isn't he? You do better with a bullet tip. Yeah, Nathan, me too. Yes, Janie, new ring, thank you for asking, and new nails today. I finally bit the bullet and got my nails done because let me tell you, they were bad. They were very bad and I have to, I'm doing a stamping presentation in Vegas and I, of course, all week they just kept ripping right off. So I was like, all right, well, I guess if there's any time, there's no time like the present. You know what, before we do this, oh, come on, I forgot. We gotta stamp the, we gotta stamp the tree. Why didn't I do that? So yes, we got, my husband and I found a ring. We want, we, it is my 20th wedding anniversary gift. We've been looking for quite some time. We actually um, took my grandmother's ring and altered it. We put a stone in the middle of it. Let me pull this back up here. So thanks for, thanks for noticing. My husband was so excited. He wants everybody to see it. He's very proud. All right, so the tree. Let's do some little some little light. I should have done this ahead of time too. I didn't think about it. When I went to get my nails done, those of you who get your nails done all the time will know what all this is. But I told her, I said, I don't want acrylic nails. I don't have time for that. But look at my nails. Please help me fix them. So she said, okay, how about we dip them? And I had heard that that was maybe not so good. And the little girl that works up at the front, she's kind of young and in her 20s and cute. And she said, oh yeah, yeah, that's what you should do. It'll last three to four weeks. It's not, no problem for your nails. Just soak them right off. And I'm thinking, oh yeah, right. So that's what we did. And they totally feel and look like acrylic nails, which is what I told her I didn't want. But for the three weeks that I have them, they will look beautiful. And then I will suffer the consequences when I take them off. I tell my girls all the time, beauty hurts. But at least now I don't have to worry about my nails looking terrible. It's a lot of pressure to 
put your hands up in front of thousands of people on a giant jumbo screen. It's a lot of pressure. Okay, now we can go back to the die cut machine. <laughs> you like my adopted raised table. I think that works pretty good. It's a good height because it gets really close to the camera. Okay, so let's get these dies right here and the tree right here and let's run it through hi cindy you're in the pacific ocean oh, i saw where were you traveling i can't remember i did see it were you in hawaii what i can't remember you're on a cruise maybe lucky you what a good time of the year to go on a go on a trip okay now we've got those cut out let's first put our dies back where they go so we don't lose them and let's make this fun little box I don't know if you noticed but it has kind of that scalloped top it reminds me of a like a um, headboard right and so we're gonna do that um, we're gonna make that but first my gosh I can't use my nails you guys it's bothering me oh it's too much too much now remember, all these measurements I'm getting ready to tell you. It's a lot of measurements. They're over there on that PDF. When you go to pinkbuckroo.com, you find today's post. I'll put the, the link up in the description um, when I am done with the video. So you can go right to the direct link. Um, they're, all of these are on the PDF, okay? So you don't need to quickly write them down. Don't worry. This is a four and a half by 11 inch piece of crumb cake. We're gonna score the long side at three and a half, at five, at eight and a half, and 10. And then we're gonna score the short side at three inches, all right? Now, hey, look, my bone folder is here, but it's very dirty. Do we trust it? Yeah, I think so. All right. If you want to know why my bone folder looks like it's been through the ringer, it's because I use it to add ink to my ink pads, and apparently I didn't wipe it off last time. Shocker. All right, now we're going to cut this corner off. Okay, let me lay it down so you can see. I think we, we scored it. What did we do first? Was it on this side at three and a half? So no, it was on this side. This end piece right here, the skit, the last skinny piece, you're gonna cut that corner. Oh, wait, and then you're going to cut these lines. And get your strong adhesive. You know what to do, tear and tape or Tombow, don't use your snail for boxes, especially when they have alcohol in them and they're gonna be heavy. All right, now fold those two sides in, put a little bit of adhesive on the back flap, and then put some adhesive on the front flap. And there's the bottom of our box. Now we're gonna take this piece, and this piece is three and a half by six, and it's gonna go like that. But first we're gonna do that, that beautiful little scallop. And if you've never seen that scallop edgelet before, if I can pick it up, this is it. It is from the Magnolia, it's not called Magnolia Lane, Magnolia Memories dies. Let's move this over here. And when you put it down, you want to put it, I always, <laughs> I always do it wrong. You want to put the straight side up, okay, so it's the this is the cutting side. I always feel like I need to do it like this, but that's not right. Put the straight side up, and that's what it's gonna. That is the cutting edge right there, okay? So we're gonna cut that. Look how cute! So cute. Then you're gonna get your DSP and see how it's a little bit smaller. This measures three and a fourth. Let me make sure I tell you the right one. Three and a fourth by four. 
All right, and we're going to do the same thing. You want to center it. It's very hard to do it from this angle. Hopefully I'm getting it centered enough. Run it through. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. So have you guys started on your Christmas crafts or are you working on Thanksgiving? Speaking of, there was something I wanted to show you. Chris sent me something super cute in the mail. I need to show you guys. I'll show you at the end, okay? Um, she was working on Thanksgiving crafts and she sent me a goodie. I kind of just skip right over Thanksgiving. My kids are always like, why is there so much Christmas stuff in the stores when we haven't even had Thanksgiving? Like, don't you know, nobody does cares about Thanksgiving. I mean, we do, but apparently the stores don't think we do. All right, so there. I have it, stuck it in the back like that. And there's our box. Now we're gonna put this other designer series paper here in the front. And we're gonna put this strip of cherry cobbler, one and a half by three, right there. And then, oh, there's my tree. I was thinking, oh no, don't tell me I've lost the tree. We're gonna flip this over, put some dimensionals right there. Let's see, I'll put it down a little bit, right there, and our tree. Now, after this, at this point, you're gonna fill it with all the goodies, which I don't have the other goodies that are in my car. I left them in my car. But we'll just put these guys right here like this, okay? And you're gonna make this sentiment. This is a stitched label from the stitched label dies. And we're gonna use the, the uh, fonts, the sentiments from this set are really fun. Let me see, where's the stamp set? These two right here, wishing you a hmm, Christmas. They're together. See how they're together? So you stamp them and then you stamp one of these in the middle. So we have that and we have tis the hmm, season. So I thought that was pretty clever. That way you don't have to worry about getting them spaced correctly because they are spaced, whoops, they're spaced correctly already for you. So wishing you a hmm, Christmas. And thanks, Andrea, thanks for sharing. You do some Thanksgiving crafts, Nathan? Yeah, I know, maybe it's just me. And then cherry cobbler, yummy in the middle. Wishing you a yummy Christmas. When I was teaching um, kindergarten first grade, we did lots of Thanksgiving crafts. We spent a lot of time talking about Thanksgiving, but I just don't really make a lot of paper crafts for Thanksgiving. All right, so now when you have your, you know what, hold on. I think they might be right here. Oh, they are right here. I didn't leave them in the car. Here they are. And let me tell you, they were a lot more expensive at Starbucks than they were at um, on Amazon. And I folded this one in half. And if you're going to give this to kids, you could just do hot chocolate because peppermint mocha latte may not be something kids like. <laughs> Maybe not. All right, I'm gonna clip this. This is just one of those little Walmart clips. You can use any clips you want, whatever you've got. Stick a little dimensional. Oh my gosh, I feel like um, like a T-Rex with the short little arms, like my nails aren't working, my fingers aren't working. There we go. <laughs> okay, and then this little tiny piece right here, hopefully it'll be enough. This is Nature's Twine, the Nature's Twine set. It comes in four colors. You get four colors when you buy it. You could also use the linen thread, the white twine, or if you had cherry cobbler ribbon. And voila, so fun. This is a little more of an involved um, treat, but... That would make a fun little party favor, wouldn't it? If you were having maybe a dinner party for Christmas, you could send that home with each couple um, if you made just three or four of them. I think that's really cute, right? What do you guys think? And look, here it is compared to crumb cake and soft suede. I think I like soft suede more. What do you guys think? Super cute, really fun. Okay, good, I'm glad you liked it. Now, let's start on the next project. Let me move these guys over back here in the back do i need them yeah i do i think i'm gonna put this over here 
make more room on my table. Now, the next project is so fun. I was so excited when I, when I thought about it. And it's a little like a, like a clamshell, right? It opens like this. It opens like that and it has all the cute paper and I have some Ghirardelli's in here you could do I also have a little hostess cupcake that I bought that's round it's some kind of Christmas cupcake and that fit in there too but I'm saving it for a different project so fill it with chocolate and it'll be awesome also you know what I saw you guys at Dollar Tree I wish I had bought it they had these little tiny gingerbread houses they were like I don't like this big I mean, they were like a 3D gingerbread house made of, you know, icing and cake and stuff. So that might fit in there. But anyways, look what I did here. Can you guys see the snow? It's the 3D puff paint snow as the icing on your gingerbread house. Now I'm going to show you how to be a little more um, precise with your snowfall accents puff paint if you've used this you know that it's awesome but it's a little mm, what's the word it comes out runny <laughs> it comes out really runny so it's hard to have a lot of control over it now I also want to tell you that I'm doing something I'm breaking the rules I'm breaking all my rules here with this project I did this several times playing around with it and I found that when I stamped this in I wanted to stamp it in soft suede, right, on crumb cake. Um, but the puff paint picks up the ink from the the crumb, you know, the water-based inks. Um, and, and so you could see ink in the snow, and it did not like that at all. So it then decided I needed to stamp it in stays on. Stays on I don't use hardly ever, except for basically when I'm watercoloring. You're not supposed to use your stamp and blends with your stays on because they're both alcohol based but we're going to do it today because we're just coloring a little bit and it prevents the um, snow from picking up that stays on uh, I mean picking up that ink and, and discoloring your snow or your icing now I want to caution you about using your stays on I don't I know that we're not supposed to use it with our blends but we're just using it a tiny bit but I do not at all like to use my stays on ink with my photopolymer stamps photopolymers are the ones that are clear which is what this gingerbread house is it's clear it's photopolymer um, you will find that if you use stays on on your photopolymer it makes your um, stamp sticky it kind of almost alters the texture of your stamp if you don't get it off quickly but you can do it you just have to be ready to clean it really quickly okay so please know that i'm cautioning cautioning you if you're using stays on with your photopolymer that you need to be ready to clean it all right but if we're going to watercolor anything we have to use stays on so sometimes like this if you wanted to watercolor this you have to use stays on and it's a photopolymer stamp now this is how I clean it I take my chamois and I oh it's almost dry I wipe it down really good then I take this the stamp cleaning pad and mine looks horrible but it works and it this is more of an oily I don't know what's in it you guys I probably should do that research and tell you but it, it is much better it'll clean all of that off real quick and then take your chamois again and wipe off anything that the stamp cleaning pad left that's how I do it that may not be how you do it or how other people do it but that works for me for these um, photopolymers and stays on all right so there's that word of caution now let's do the fun part okay i'm going to bring back that tray that my mom says i stole but she gave it to me we're going to put this up close when you do puff paint you're going to need your heat tool and for this you're going to also need an aqua painter okay so you can see it dries like glue and i have I have it on a block if you don't want to do this to your block I haven't even tried to get it off I'm pretty sure it'll just peel right off you could also use your silicone mat or paper plate or whatever okay 
And let me get my heat tool ready to go. One thing I like to do is turn my heat tool on so it starts warming up because it does take, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds to get warm. Now I'm gonna take my puff paint and I'm just, oh, look you guys, what just happened? Okay, no worries, it's fine. We're just gonna wipe it off. Because that's one of the things I'm going to tell you. If you get puff paint where you don't want it, you just wipe it away. What in the world? It's clogged. Well, that'll have to go on the blooper reel. Yesterday, one of my um, one of my blends totally exploded when I opened it when I was taking when I was filming the video. This is slanted and it's not working all right. All right, I'm going to put this down here. Okay, so I've put it on the block and I'm just going to paint it on, just like that. Now I am not squeezing any water into this, but I'm using the tip of my aqua painter and it's giving me a lot more control over that puff paint than if I was trying to squirt it like you guys just saw and it squirted it all over the place, okay? So do a little bit, then get your heat tool and heat it up but you got to work in small little batches and if you guys haven't seen this yet it's really fun see it's getting ready to puff up there we go one thing i meant to do first is to cut it out <laughs> oh well when you cut it out and you already have your puff paint in there it's going to squish your puff paint a little bit so you might want to cut it out first all right, so we're just kind of, and see how I'm just like dabbing it, dot, 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 dot. And um, another little word of caution is to go clean your aqua painter as soon as you're done. Clean it with a little bit of soap and water so that it won't dry all hard and then you'll be super mad at me saying I ruined your aqua painter. The thing about the puff paint too is if you get in an area where you didn't get enough, you just go add more. Or if you want it puffier, you add another layer. And we used this last week and I told you guys that every heat tool is different. Um, I have a, another heat tool that is from a million years ago. It was the first heat tool I bought. I mean, it's probably 25 years old. And it gets way hotter than this heat tool. God, I don't want to set anything on fire. Let me make sure that's pointing out. Um, so be careful when you are using your heat tool. Um, test it out first. Um, this will scorch. Your paper will scorch. The snow can scorch. But my other heat tool is hotter and it makes the puff paint actually even puffier than this one does. Um, so it just depends on what your heat tool is like and what it does. Look, isn't that fun? Hopefully you guys can see that. It's really fun. Now I'm not going to do all of it because even some of those smaller little swirls are hard to do. And these guys right here, these little gumdrops, the tiny ones, they're too small. So we're just going to put, we're going to cover over them. We're going to ice right over them with our little icing, our icing puff paint. I also thought, you know, if you did this and you mixed, I wonder if you put a drop of ink in the puff paint, would it change the color of it? Would it change, would it still work? It's a science experiment, we need to do it. All right, so where else? How about above the door right here? You know, if you have an old paintbrush, you guys, you don't wanna use your aqua painter, you could do that because I'm not using the water in the aqua painter if you're worried about your aqua painter, because they're expensive. You could just get an old cheapy paintbrush and do it, but you want to make sure you have a fine tip on that paintbrush so that you can get in those little areas. Now I tried originally to do all these little swirls and around the windows and yeah, I'm not that good. It was just too small. So we're gonna leave it, oh wait, one more, one more down here. And then we're gonna leave it. And we're gonna get that white um, watercolor pencil and do those. 
but it adds enough texture to really make it look like the um, icing. Here's the puff paint on a block. Sorry, it was sliding off my little makeshift table here that I was trying to get closer to the um, camera. I put it on a block like that and you just wipe it off. And then take your, take your aqua painter and go wash it real good. Okay, now, one thing that stamping it on crumb cake saves us from is having to color in all that, um, all that, what we did soft suede last time, all the gingerbread, um, because that really is what I think takes a really long time. So, since you have, already stamped it on crumb cake. Now all you're gonna do is color in like the candy. Um, the white watercolor pencil is great for adding white to colored cardstock. Hi Sonia, how are you? All right, so add that. And you should really like experiment and see how good are you? How steady is your hand? Can you get through these little skinny lines? Mine started looking real messy. <laughs> like a real gingerbread house that I would bake. It was, I didn't have a lot of control in those teeny tiny spots, but in the bigger spots, it was, it was good. It was perfect. It was easy. Um, it's, it's almost, it reminds me of milk when it comes out. It's, um, it's not super liquidy, but it is definitely liquidy. So it, it comes off the tip of your aqua painter. Um, it kind of stays where you put it. Unless of course you have an a little table that is at an angle. All right, now I'm gonna get my red stamp and blend and fill in. One thing um, I also found that is if you do the coloring first and then do the puff paint, the puff paint again was picking up that color from the blends and it was kind of bleeding into, whoops, bleeding into the puff paint. So, I think it's better to add the color once that puff paint is dry so that it won't bleed into it. Now this little wreath is kind of a pain. It's so tiny. So one thing I thought of, if you didn't want to, in a minute you'll see I'm gonna attempt to color around all those tiny dots. If you didn't wanna do that, you could color it all in with your green and then just add some rhinestones. We've got red rhinestones that you could use, right? Lisa, regular paintbrush. Yeah, if you've got them, absolutely. I just grabbed that aqua painter because I, I don't know. I didn't know if I needed it water, but I didn't. And I think probably if you added water, it would change the, you know, the chemicals or chemical com composition of the... <laughs> of paint, whatever makes it do its magic. So you probably don't want to add water. Although, has anybody added, has anybody tried to add ink to your puff paint yet? I'm sure someone has tried it. I haven't yet. All right, so there we go. That's dark, call me clover. Hmm, let's see what else. Okay, now I'm gonna stop here. I'm not gonna color in the windows this time. I'm gonna color in this one little gumdrop and, oh wait, no, I'm not gonna stop, hold on. I want to get my dark crumb cake. Let's color in these little stones and let's color in our little gingerbread guy. All right, so you can see, yes, there is still coloring involved. All right, we're coloring the buttons too. <laughs> there is coloring involved. However, not as much. And if you didn't want to do the puff paint, just use the white pencil, right? All right, there we go. Showing you how to use your puff paint more precisely. Let's see, Nathan, it made it more liquidy. Uh-huh, okay, you added color to it. And did you heat it? Did it work? I don't know. I feel like it should totally work, but then I'm thinking, but you're changing the composition of the, I'm not a scientist, but you guys know what I mean. Changing the, the liquid itself, so maybe the 
color would cause it to not puff up. Oh, these nails. All right, there we go. How cute. And yes, die cut it before you puff paint it. Probably a better idea. Okay, now let's make this little box. It's really cute. Um, I decided to, on this one, on that last one, I don't think I even mentioned what that designer series paper was, the plaid. Oh my gosh, you guys, these nails. Um, the plaid, I think it, it's called wrapped in plaid. And I believe it's on back order right now. Um, oh, maybe this paper's on back order too. Yeah. Um, but I, because this paper has very vanilla, I'm going with a very vanilla um, little banner as well. Okay, measurements right here. Let's see, what are we gonna do first? A seven and three fourths by three and an eighth, real red. And we're just gonna score it at three and an eighth and four and five eighths. And then another piece of real red, 10 and a half by three. And you're gonna score the short side just in half at one and a half. And then alongside at two and a half, five, seven and a half, and ten. Okay. And consistency. Debbie, you took the words right out of my mouth. Consistency. That's the right word I was looking for. Thank you. It kind of worked. Yeah, we need to try it. Aren't you coloring? Did I not color the candy cane? <laughs> You don't want a brown and white candy cane, Karen? Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> oh, maybe it's a gingerbread flavored candy cane. Every time I color those, I forget something. I've colored that gingerbread house probably 12 times now, and every time when I'm done, I realize I've forgotten to color something. Yes, thank you, I will go back and fix it. Okay, so did you see what I did? Long piece. Cut the, the corner off just like we did before. Cut these apart. Strong adhesive on the tab. Fold it over in half and you've got this, okay? Now fold your sides in and we're gonna put adhesive on two of them. Now I did mention I recorded clean versions of these videos, of these projects for you. So if you want to come back and make them later, you don't have to see all my silly chit chat and all that because I know sometimes that can drive you crazy when you're really just like, give me the measurements. So there will be clean recordings over on my YouTube. I'm just trimming my um, crooked um, pieces there. Over on YouTube this afternoon, as soon as I'm done, they're already uploaded, I just need to make them public. All right, so on this piece, we're gonna take our, what is this called? I can't even remember. Well, I know it's real red, curly ribbon curly ribbon okay and I'm going to put adhesive right there on those two sides I'm going to lay this piece down like this and over here I'm going to lay the box over the ribbon centering it hopefully okay and over here we're going to do a three by three piece of designer series paper. Whoa, that looks a little bit big. And then inside is another piece of DSP. Two, um, two and three quarters by two and three quarters. Now you guys, if you order this weekend, you know I'm gonna send you these projects for free. If I don't happen to send you the exact same paper, it's because it's on back order. You will get something that will match, I promise, but it may not be exactly the same, so please, Cut me some slack. I have been fighting the back orders for a while now. All right, so now we're gonna close that up like that. All right, snip and snip. There we go, we're almost done. Another three by three piece on the front. Isn't this paper so cute? The Twall Tidings Designer Series paper. Okay, Karen. She doesn't like a gingerbread flavored candy cane. And I would think the rest of us would prefer peppermint. This seems like this is the wrong color. Yeah, well, it's cherry cobbler. We're going with it. No turning back now. That's what my daughter said to me today when I, my oldest daughter gets her nails done. She goes and gets, you know, fake nails. And she's always bugging me to get mine done. And I texted her and said, well, 
I think I got some something close to fake nails today. And she said, well, there's no turning back now, Mom. We can go together every time <laughs> and get our nails done. I know. I am not. I am not. I am not. I am not. I've got too much to do to sit there for over an hour. Okay. Stampin' Dimensionals, of course. Lay that down. Now, your sentiment, you could do it however you wanted. You could do a little something sticking off the top, but I thought I would show you how to do um, the sentiment that we did a minute ago in a different way. Wishing you a hmm, Christmas. And instead, I need my stamp cleaner. It's run away. Where did it go? Here it is. Um, instead of stamping it as it's designed, let's make a little banner with it, okay? So I'm gonna take my soft suede and I'm just gonna ink up that top part, wishing you a, stamp that right there. And then I'm gonna get the yummy and do that in real red. Well, I can't see, let's see, right there. And then over here, we're gonna do, I cleaned it, make sure you clean it, just the Christmas part, and stamp that right there. There we go. All right, so it's a little bit different, making it a longer sentiment. Judy, you're leaving for Vegas in four hours. Lucky you, I'm going early tomorrow morning. I will, I leave here at seven and get there at, eight <laughs> and it's a two hour flight isn't that funny going back in time so i arrive in vegas at eight in the morning i'm not sure what there is to do at eight in the morning but my friend kimberly and i are on the same flight we'll find something to do we're gonna go to paris and eat brunch with some of my downline maybe i don't know it'll be fun we'll find something to do i actually have to go and do a rehearsal at noon and then maybe i can go take a nap in my hotel room. Okay, dimensionals, and we'll just put it right across. I don't know, last time I put it here because I didn't like the way my gingerbread man looked. Ta-da, we are done with that project. What do you guys think? That's fun, right? And lots of options with that box. I mean, you could really put anything in there. Um, we've been looking um, high and low for gingerbread man, or gingerbread treats in the grocery store. My downline Lisa, she's been helping me. And we've been looking, looking, looking. And uh, so really, there's, there's probably a lot of things to come. We just, you know, the Christmas stuff has just come out. All right, you guys. So there's project number two. I hope you like it. The last project, let me close my ink pads up so we don't have a disaster. The last project, I'm going to show you how to stamp this without coloring it at all. You're not going to have to color it one bit. All right, let me clean up my mess. Hold please. That way I'll have room here and not be working in a teeny tiny little space. Oh, I love the hearts. Thanks guys. They're so sweet. All right, the next project, close that guy up. He's so gross to look at. The next project is this one right here. And it holds a vanilla bean lip gloss. And these are from Bath and Body Works. They were actually on sale a few weeks ago. I got an email. Um, they were like $2.99. And they put them on sale from time to time. So keep your eye out. They're really cute. They also had, I just thought that they looked a lot like the gingerbread. Um, but I think I'm going to save this one for the cup of Christmas. But here you go. Vanilla bean little gingerbread reindeer. And this just closes down and slides right behind our little Christmas tree like that. All right. Okay, let's make the holder first. You're going to need two pieces of soft suede because we can't get a long enough piece that we need um, out of just one piece of uh, soft suede because it would need to be really long. Thanks, Jean. Um, you know, I am not bringing swap cards this time. Um, I just, <laughs> I couldn't get it done. I, um, I know this will be the first time ever. I don't take any swap cards. 
Okay, so let's look at the measurements. You need a piece of soft suede cardstock, nine and a fourth by two. And we're gonna score, there's lots of measurements, okay? Three fourths, one and a half, five and three fourths, six and a half, eight, and eight and three fourths. Quite a few measurements, right? All right, now, this is very, very similar to the hand sanitizer holders I used to make, if you've ever made those. Um, here's how we had it on the Simply Scored. This is the top and this is the bottom. So you're gonna turn it and these two pieces are gonna fold over like that. And these are gonna fold in like that. Do, do, do. They just fold right in like that, okay? Does that make sense? Just fold it all towards the center. And we're gonna add that other piece right here so that it comes down. Now, here's the problem. We need a three quarter inch punch. That's the size of these. And when I made it, I made it with a three quarters inch punch, but the three quarters inch punch has retired. So, that's why it's not on your supply list. You can use a one inch punch and just make sure that the front of your punch lines up with that and it's gonna go further back like this, but it won't matter because you're gonna fold that over and it's gonna give you enough space there to put that down in there, okay? Or I'm sure many of you have, still have your three quarter inch circle punch. I don't know why that retired, but it did. All right, I have put my strong adhesive there on that tab and we're gonna fold it over like this, get it nice and square. Okay, we'll stick this one in here for now. There we go. And then we're gonna add that piece like this, okay? But let's stamp it. Where is my gingerbread house? Let's bring it over. And we need to, this, little, this other little piece of soft suede, um, we're gonna stamp this in soft suede. And I have found, I did it two different ways. Here it is where you just stamp the soft suede. Here it is when you stamp off first and then stamp it. And I like that better because it's more, um, you know, it's not as bold as that one. It blends more into the background, okay? So let's take our soft suede and just stamp it right there on our grid paper to stamp off. And then we know where to put our, our little piece. All right, so we're just gonna kind of center it. Doesn't have to be perfect because it's in the background. It doesn't really matter. All right, and then snap, and there it is. Just light in the background, tone on tone. All right, now we're gonna put this piece, we're gonna put some strong adhesive. Before we do that, let's take some scissors and cut the corners of this piece off right here. Okay, that way if my measurements are just a hair off, you won't be able to tell, or my cutting. I'm gonna put that right on there, okay? There we go. Now we're gonna put the tree here to help us kind of slide that behind the tree, kind of as a little latch. First I'm gonna put some snow, also known as sparkle glimmer paper. It's one and a half by two. I'm gonna put that right there. And this is probably something I should have done ahead of time, but I didn't. What time is it? Oh, three o'clock. I've got about five minutes. Okay, we'll do the tree. We'll do a couple of gumdrops. The gumdrops are the cutest. You could probably make really cute projects just with those gumdrops. All right, real quick, let's see. Dark, I knew these projects would take us a while today. Dark Call Me Clover or whatever green you want to use because there's nothing really here to match it to. There's no paper. Um, it's got a little layer of snow on the end of each of the little sections, so try to go around that. Again, if this is too hard for you to go around these little dots, just color over them and add some rhinestones for the lights. That would probably save all of us a lot of time. All right, there we go. Get some, you know, I don't want to use that cherry cobbler. That's the marker yesterday when I opened it. I pulled the whole thing apart. It was the most bizarre thing. I had never seen that happen <laughs> before. 
I put it back together and it was fine. But thank goodness it wasn't on the live. Y'all would have laughed. You would have thought that was so funny. All right, color that in. And let's do blue dot, dot, dot. This is light night of navy. And last but not least, we'll do dark daffodil delight. Dot, dot, dot. Color that in. And can't leave that trunk bare. Let's color that. There we go. Now bring over my die cut machine. Where is it? Right here. You would think that that would be that would be difficult to lose, but no. Yet I do lose my big shot. All right, the tree and the gumdrops. This little gumdrop die for the other stamp set, for the cuckoo for you stamp set, is the little door on the cuckoo clock. It's very, very cute. It also has a little mechanism, a little die that you can make on the cuckoo clock that you pull it and it opens the door. It's very clever. There's a video, Stampin' Up! has a video showing you how to do it. These dies are really neat. And if you get them, with your yummy Christmas, you should get the cuckoo for you too, because then you'll be able to use them all year long. All right, we are almost done. We're almost there. Addie's gonna be waiting for me to pick her up. It's cold today too. She's gonna be mad. All right, here's the key to this, okay? You wanna take your tree and you want to adhere it down here so that that dimensional is right on the edge not overlapping but that that's gonna come down right there and so we'll put the tree right there like that and then this guy slides right underneath the tree or behind the tree okay add a few gumdrops you could even do a little row of gumdrops how cute would that be little row. I haven't looked at your comments. Gingerbread marshmallows recipes on Pinterest. Oh my gosh. You know, I was thinking about gingerbread marshmallows. I feel like I've seen gingerbread man marshmallows before. All right, now let's do the sentiment. This time we're going to use the tis the, and we'll do yummy season, and we're going to cut them apart because I like to make things even more difficult. I'm not going to keep it simple. You guys know me by now. You know that I like to make things more complicated than they have to be. Tis the yummy season. I've shown you three different ways to use this sentiment. Get your scissors or your new paper trimmer if you have the new one and you wanna just cut these out. Just a rectangle around each one, okay? Now, you guys, I will be back next week. I already have next week's projects planned and ready. I got ahead this weekend. I did a friend's marathon. Weather was nasty, and I got ahead. So next week, plan on joining me. It's going to be the day right before my retreat, so I might look a little harried, but I'll be ready for you. We're going to do the Stitched Stars next week. I love the stitched stars and uh, I've almost not wanted to use them because I just wanted them to be the cutest ever and I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to come up with something that was the cutest ever but I think you'll like what I came up with and for all my card makers out there we'll have cards next week I promise I know we went back to treats this week all right, I had to make, I had to cut the mini dimensional in half and my, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to practice taking things off of these nails. <laughs> so I cut a mini dimensional in half, you guys, and so now we're going to call it a micro dimensional because it's half of a mini dimensional. I made my own joke. It's pretty funny. At least 
in here by myself it is. I don't know, you guys are probably laughing at me and not laughing with me at this point. Take your twine, feed it through, tie your bow, and you are through. Look, I made a rhyme. These are fun. These are great non-sugary treats. Little lip glosses. If you have teenagers who want to give things out at school, these would be awesome. And ta-da! All right, you guys, we made it. We made it. Let's look at what we made. And I have to tell you, I have some other projects. Let me let me show you real quick. My downline Lisa made some things that are super cute. Here we go. We got that. Now let me grab them. Where did they go? Right here. Lisa thought that it would be really cute to do a card with a gingerbread house. And look, include a little pack of crayons and they can color it like for a kid. Wouldn't that be cute? Very cute. And then um, what else? She did, she did this too. Just a little treat. Um, like a little goodie for a child. Um, maybe, you know, when my kids were little, we used to go to um, Coco with Santa. Somebody had Santa come to their house and they invited all of us. And we'd come over and have cookies and they'd get to talk to Santa. This would make a great party favor for that. You'd hand these out, you've stamped it, and the kids go home with little crayons and they can color it in and you don't have to color it. Very cute, right? And then last but not least, here's a little box that she made. Isn't it awesome? Her coloring's really good too. She colored this one. Very good, Lisa, very good. All right, that's it for me today, you guys. I will be back next week. Remember, um, I'm gonna be in Las Vegas this weekend, so be watching Facebook, of course, for sneak peeks and um, ideas and things that are coming. We're gonna get the occasions catalog and the celebration catalog. So keep your eyes peeled for sneak peeks if you want them. Don't forget, if you want these for free, put your order in by Monday at midnight. There's the host code. And let me know if you have any questions, okay? Thanks, Kathy. I hope to see some of you in Vegas, all right? You guys have a great weekend. Thanks so much for joining me today. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye.